First of all, good evening. Bonsoir, Madame and Monsieur. Tangakalo Gilawa. It's interesting what happens when you ask for a stand, but no light. And when uh, the podium's not large enough for the prepared speech that I'm supposed to give. And I hope I don't offend anybody, but with the power of these lights, all I see is darkness. So I'll try to use my usual style of speaking. First of all, I want to thank very much uh, the invitation to be here with you this evening. This is a wonderful cause, and I really enjoyed the first speaker very, very much. And I hope my aide de camp there can signal to me when 10 and a half minutes are up. And, but I was at Mass at St. Dunstan's on the 7, seven o'clock Mass on a Sunday evening, which we call as a catch-all Mass. If we don't make any Masses from Saturday to most of Sunday, then catch-all Mass is at 7 o'clock. And so as I was leaving, somebody approached me and says, oh, by the way, I've been trying to get a hold of you. Would you like to participate in this event? And I said, sure, I will. So this is the event. When I was born in 1946 in my community on the Tubic First Nation in January 21st, 1946, I was born uh, two months premature. And at the time, I was pretty well given up for dead by everybody except my mother. And my mother, who had already had uh, uh, seven children, uh, thought that this one was also special for her. Everybody else in the community said, give him up. There's very little that was available in a rural area, especially in a First Nation community, to deal with children who have not developed according to the health standards. But lo and behold, she prayed, the prayers were answered, and here I am today. So many of these firsts that you hear in my introduction did not come with the intent of being first in anything. I always say I was the first one in my family to fail grade one, and no one else seemed to want to follow me in that regard. <laughs> uh, and I, I failed grade one mainly because I, couldn't, I could not uh, read English. I could not read the literature. I say that mainly because um, I have a grandson. A lot of you hear about my grandson, and I love to speak about grandsons, grandchildren, but in particular, he's four years old. And here just about two weeks ago, my wife and I were visiting him. He's in a pre-kindergarten program, and he's just learning how to read. So he, in my language, uh, grandfather is called Mosums, Momo. So last year, before he could read, and we were, my wife and I were teaching him this nursery rhyme about Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. So and all these different animals. So when he came to Old MacDonald had a cow, we had a moo moo here, moo moo there. He says, moo moo, you're a cow. <laughs> and uh, so uh, after that humbling experience, uh, when I turned 65 in January 21st of this year, my wife gets him online and says, uh, Katie, can you, Katie, can you sing happy birthday to Momo? So Kato sings the happy birthday and he says, Momo, how old are you? Uh, Bess says, uh, can you count to 65, Cato? Cato starts counting until he gets to 65 and takes a deep breath. Whew. Momo, you're old. <laughs> so, <laughs> so grandchildren teach us so much as adults. And through my grandchild, I'm learning a lot. Learning a lot about how can an infant who's nearly born sustain itself by liquid, be it the mother's nourishment or artificial food or whatever, so that the brain and the body develop together. I marveled with my grandson. I didn't, I think as a father at the time, maybe I was too young, I didn't realize this part of mystery of life, how it transformed, and how children visually uh, use its receptions to learn. As I said this spring when I went to see him, they're teaching him how to read, and he got these two pieces of paper, you know. First one was cat, rat, cat, sat, cat, sat, 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 and rat, sat, sat. And at the end it says fat, cat, fat, rat. Boys, he was so proud. 
So I told my wife, I said, get me that camera. I've got to record this Kodak moment. We used to call them Kodak moments. I'm not sure what they call them now, but it's, you know, as a grandparent, you want to catch this moment because you know it's an important part of his development. And, and then my wife says, I think you would have failed kindergarten back then too. So in a way, you know, it's the humility, the humbleness, so you don't take yourself too seriously. And in this beautiful job that I have, I'll just give you a bit of an idea of what happened today. We've been a little bit on edge all this week, trying to find out when am I going to be summoned to the legislature. And so some of the functions I would be doing were make sure they're localized so you're in a good, good driving distance to the legislature. So this morning, we went to St. John and met with the Larsh community. And you probably all know Larsh. Larsh is a community uh, made in St. St. John to help those who are physically and also mentally challenged. Those are unfortunate words that we use in our society. But they have a beautiful home where volunteers come in and be with these people so that these people feel as persons, so that they feel complete, so that they feel they're contributing members of our society. And they are. And they are. So this morning, uh, and my wife and I went to visit them, and uh, we spent a beautiful hour with them. Of course, while I'm there, I get the call, right? Better head back to Fredericton pretty soon. But we also had a commitment to a school in that area called St. Patrick's. And I said, well, let's at least go visit the school, spend a little bit of time with the students, because education is so important in my own life. And I want to encourage these young children to do their very best. And sure enough, we spent uh, half an hour, 40 minutes with these students. And the students wanted to display for me as lieutenant governor. See, a lot of these children are excited that somebody, I don't feel important, but for them it is, you see. When they see you on that internet, all of a sudden, they see the building, they see me, they say, oh, gee, this guy's important. But for these students, I want to encourage them to work hard, to be good students so that they will, in fact, realize their potential, no matter what their potential is, no matter what they do, just so they realize they're good people and they're not failures. Although out of failure comes possibilities as well. It's just a harder drive, a harder thing. But anyway, so one young girl, grade two, decided to play her violin for me, beautiful music. And she's been practicing three years. Another one was an artist. She was in grade three. She said, I've got something here to give you. And beautiful sketches that she did. And another one was uh, probably a future aeronautical engineer because he made a jet out of Lego. And then there was another one said, I'm in brownies. Here are my badges that I have won, that I've worked for. And so she explained the badges to me and there were wonderful events that they're doing. And then another one says, well, here's what our class did. Kind of a shy guy, but still, you know, uh, once we got a bite of pizza in, then he, that gave him the energy to speak. But I emphasize do things mainly because I think it's important that as individuals, we reach out to others, especially those who are less fortunate. People who didn't quite have what we had. People who didn't get the opportunities, either to get scholarships or to give somebody the backing to pursue their intellectual developments, their goals, their objectives, to have confidence in who they are as individuals. And this is what attracts me so much about L'Arche, is these individuals are dedicated. Of course, I came back to Fredericton, did the usual uh, responsible role that I have to use as Lieutenant Governor to proclaim a new legislation. After that, back to Government House, and I met with young high school students gathered here in Fredericton this weekend as parliamentarians, because they're coming to the legislature to, in fact, say they are parliamentarians, legislators from around the province, MLAs, and here's their opportunity. So I left them about 6.30 before I came to this site. I want to share that with you, because I think it's important that we encourage our young people. It's important as us as parents, and especially as grandparents, because I think it's only now that I'm a grandparent I realize I should listen to my sons. But I was too busy. I was too busy. I had to make a living to support my wife and our sons. And as a result of trying to make this living, 
acquiring wealth. I missed the opportunity to participate in many events that our children were involved in. So I encourage you as parents and grandparents, help. Make your services available. Again, I want to thank you very much for this invitation. It's wonderful to be here, and I'm looking forward to these other speakers uh, so that I will learn something from them. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Will anyone?